what's up guys so i just wanted to get on here and do a quick video tutorial uh, it's just kind of a basic tutorial but uh, i wanted to show you guys how to install a catch can this is a 2017 mazda 3 with a 2.0 liter motor um, this will probably apply to the 2.5 as long as it's a sky active as well um, but realistically guys this is not a hard job um, it is a, a little bit of work but uh, if you put about an hour, hour and a half into it, uh, you should, should get it uh, pretty set. So first thing you've got to do when you are trying to figure out, you know, how to get your catch can set in here, where to mount it and all that. First thing you've got to do is remove your air box. Um, I do have an aftermarket cork sport cold air box with an aftermarket uh, cork sport short ram intake as well. Uh, so that does make this job a little bit easier because the factory airbox kind of protrudes down into this area. And so you may not have a great mounting spot here for your catch can. Um, but if you do, great. Uh, it's pretty simple to get this mounted up. It's just two self-tappers. You can just drill straight into the frame rail. It's not a super solid piece of metal, um, so you can drill through it pretty easily. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and pull your airbox out. Um, I believe on the factory setup, it's similar. I do have a, like a factory style snout that goes here. It's two 13 millimeter bolts. And then for my air box, it's going to be, uh, basically four little hand set screws that hold the cover on, onto the actual box itself. Um, and then a bunch of 10 millimeters to get my, uh, hoses off of my intake pipe. Um, once you get all that stuff off, the next order of business would be to remove the throttle body here from the intake manifold, um, which isn't too difficult. It's going to be four eight millimeter bolts that go in here on the front. And then there is one small 10 millimeter bolt right here as a upper radiator hose support. So you pull that off, your throttle body comes off and you can kind of just set it to the side. Um, and after that, you're, you're almost home free. You've, uh, got a few 10 millimeter bolts that go here into the intake manifold so you have two on the top you got one in the middle right there one on this side and then one right here um, and then you also have one on the bottom uh, take note of the location of where those bolts go uh, there's going to be a long bolt right here that goes into that hole as well as a long bolt that goes into this one and then all of the upper intake manifold bolts are all the same size all right, and then to continue on with removing your intake manifold, you have one sensor that's right here. You go ahead and unclip that. Um, and then you've got two vacuum hoses that attach directly to the intake manifold themselves. So just go ahead and pull those off. I believe there's two small hose clamps on that. Um, after you get those lines off and this sensor off, the last order of business is to just remove some of your uh, electrical connection wire um, like little tabs that clip in right here so I believe that you have one here on this side one here you got one up top and then you have one right here as well um, I don't know I don't believe these ones are used but um, after you go ahead and pull all that off the intake manifold should be free this bottom bolt can be accessed from the top, but it is a little bit more difficult. Um, so it may be worth your time to just jack the vehicle up and remove that bottom bolt, which hooks in right here. Um, you may have to pull your skid plate off to get that, but as I said, it's not too bad to get from the top. You just kind of got to feel where that bolt's at and then get on there with a 10 mil and a ratchet and it's, it's not too bad. Um, after you pull the intake manifold off, you have access to your factory air oil separator right here with the PCV valve up top. So the inside on your catch can, you can run a line directly to your PCV valve. And I used hose clamps because these are not a very solid fitting. They don't hold onto lines very well. Um, so run your line to that. And then on the outside of the uh, catch can, you're going to run another little hose that is going to go down here to this fitting and the cho the uh, hoses that I got here are a 3 8 inch hose um, and they seem to fit really well on everything these are nice soft flexible hose um, so it allows you to kind of stretch over stuff without having to 
uh, like really jam it on there or use any lubricant or anything like that. Um, but as you can see, this is, this is a huge reason as to why you need a catch can. As you can see, all the intake ports on the intake manifold are all uh, gooped up as well as if you take a look into your intake valves you'll have a lot of carbon buildup on here in this factory air oil separator just just does not do its job very well um, as a side note it is easier to get the uh, intake manifold off of the vehicle if you remove your coolant overflow it's actually just pushed into here um, it holds on into this tab that tab and that little hole down there in the bottom there's no bolts for it just go ahead and pull off your cap set your hose and everything here to the side and then just pull straight up on this and this uh, wire loom here does run kind of into the um, overflow right here so you can see that cut out so you might have to scoot that to the side but uh, besides that it's not too bad and then you can get in here and kind of rig everything up and then after that you just put it all back together so I'll uh, stitch in a little piece where you do that and just as like a good visual representation, um, I just wanted to show you guys, this is the factory oil, air oil separator here. And uh, you can see it's definitely shiny. It's, it's got a lot of oil in it and it's making it past all three baffles and into this top chamber where oil will just get sucked right into that PCB valve. Um, so, you know, even though Mazda tried to kind of avoid this issue with direct injection motors, it, it clearly hasn't worked. Um, you can see there's a lot of oil here. There's a lot of oil on that second uh, built-in baffle plate. And this is what I'm talking about, especially with these direct injection motors. You just get a lot of oil um, past these baffles. So, you know, they tried, but definitely a fail on that part. Um, and this is why it's best to just, you know, get a catch can, run the catch can. You know, you won't have nearly as bad of issues with uh, your intake valves just getting caked up um, from all sorts of all sorts of you know gunk and burnt on oil and you know catch can also helps to get out any extra moisture and you know any of that stuff out of your motor so I definitely think it's a good investment I think this one I got here was like $18 on Amazon my hoses were about four dollars a piece over at uh, O'Reilly's this is what they look like if you guys are looking for the correct size they're two feet in length each and three eighths diameter on the inside and uh, they actually are radiator overflow tubings um, so they can handle the heat for sure uh, but it still stays nice and flexible so you don't have to worry about you know trying to squeeze it onto any of your fittings um, another thing I do recommend the crankcases do tend to build up some pressure and because there is constant oil in the top side of the crankcase um, the factory crankcase ventilation line that goes from this port right here into a spot on your intake. It'll look similar here to uh, the factory setup. Uh, I just blocked this off. It's actually a uh, blue valve stem cap just to kind of match the color there. Uh, and then on this side, I just put a little breather filter. I believe these are about $14. And they're definitely worth the uh, the expense to to just get your whole setup to not have any oil sucking into these intake ports even a little bit. Um, I definitely don't notice as much uh, residue kind of flowing through this line, but it is one of those things that you may just not notice as it is getting sucked directly into the uh, intake itself. It's also good practice just while you're in here to. Uh, Make sure your PCV valve is still functioning properly. It's very easy to test. You can just kind of rattle this back and forth. And as long as you hear that rattling sound, that's usually a good thing. That means that the ball, the little check valve ball that is inside of that PCV valve is not stuck. Uh, if that was stuck in the open position, you definitely want to replace it or at least clean it out. Uh, I do believe these come off pretty easily. I think that little collar screws off. And then you could pull that off, spray some cleaner in there, and just make sure it's not stuck open because if it is stuck open uh, you're just going to have even larger issues with it pulling a ton of oil through it uh, when it's not supposed to all right so once you get your intake manifold back in this isn't uh, too bad of a job um, kind of like i said before this is super easy super basic stuff um, 
What you want to do before you put this intake manifold on is you want to run your line, which would normally connect to this side of your PCV hose. Connect your line first, kind of before you position this, get it mapped out to where you want it to go um, under all these hoses over here, radiator hoses, uh, transmission lines, all that stuff. And make sure that this line is gonna sit somewhere below this transmission selector because you wouldn't wanna get this uh, hung up on there. So as long as it sits down you know, somewhere below the transmission selector, um, whether it's an automatic or a manual, you're pretty much good to go. All you gotta do is put your 10 millimeter bolts back in. You got two on the top, three on the bottom, which includes this one in the middle. Uh, and then you've got one on the very bottom of the intake manifold, uh, which you can access from the top, just going down through here, kind of just reach up under there. And you can put a finger on it right down in that, in that spot. Um, so it's not too bad. Uh, it's probably a little bit easier to get from the top if you can, you know, kind of just get your hand on it. And uh, if you have some experience kind of working in tighter spots, um, so after you get that bolted up on there, there's just a few important things that you need to make sure you've got hooked up first. So you want to get these vacuum lines back on. All right. So the short one, short and fat one is going to go to the top uh, of where your throttle body mounts onto the intake manifold. And then this longer one with the silver clamp on it goes to the side. All right. And then if you did remove anything off your harness here, um, like I removed your um, VVT, like solenoid right here i remove that clip uh, and then i remove these four clips as well which go to your ignition coil packs uh, that just kind of frees this up brings you know the whole wiring harness forward a little bit makes it a little bit easier to work on and then make sure everything else is in so make sure you've got um, all your little wire loom you know holders back in place here so i think you've got one here one here which i did cut a while back um, You've got this one down here, so just clip that in. And then you've got your sensor down here on the bottom of the intake manifold. Make sure that's plugged back in. Uh, and then on the very bottom, there's uh, another little pin here that uh, supports your starter wire here, as well as this sensor uh, and a few other wires on top too, some stuff that goes to the transmission. So just make sure all that's put back in place tighten this thing down make sure it's on there well and I would also recommend if you're not going to get new uh, intake manifold seals the little green seals on the back side just go ahead and wipe those off with something like a rag before you reinstall this because they're going to have a lot of dirt and a lot of oil and stuff on them so just wipe those up wipe up the mating surface and then put everything back together all right and then after you get your um, intake manifold back on you can come down to wherever your catch can is going to be located and just make sure that you know you've got the correct hoses going to the correct spot so i know this side is my in and this side is my out so this is going to come off of the pcv valve on the block and then this is going to go into my intake manifold this is your outside um, that's going to run back into that so make sure you get everything hooked up here these are super simple just the two sides and the bracket um, and then make sure, you know, too, before you, you know, fully install this, make sure you can come down in here and actually unscrew your can. I would recommend putting a little bit of anti-seize on those threads just to make sure nothing gets, you know, so seized on there that you can't get it back off when you got to empty it. Um, so you can do that. Obviously, make sure all your seals are good. Make sure you've got your seals on your fittings before you screw those in and tighten them down. And then, you know, get some good hose clamps. These... These can have a tendency to fall off, especially on the motor side where, um, you know, they're, they're a little bit looser. Um, so get some hose clamps that go in there, run everything before you put the intake manifold back on, tighten them down. Then you can pull your hoses over here and then just put some hose clamps on this side. Even if they're not, you know, going to help with the seal, they'll at least make sure that they're not going to come off um, because these are a flanged, uh, like a little male inlet uh, tube here on the top. So that makes sure that these are not gonna go anywhere, they're not gonna come off. And I really like these ones that you don't need a tool for. In case I ever do need to pull this catch can out, all I gotta do is remove these two screws on the top and pull off these two hoses and I'm good to go. 
All right, and then to uh, kind of get in here and finish up, you're gonna want to reattach your throttle body. So there's gonna be four eight millimeter bolts that hold this in place up to the intake manifold. I'll show that in just a second. Uh, and then there's gonna be one small 10 millimeter bolt here that screws into this uh, little hole, this thread hole on your throttle body. And that's just a upper radiator hose support. Um, and then I do have a throttle body ground on here as well. So you'll have to make sure to reattach that uh, if that's something that you have on your vehicle. And then after that, it's as simple as just putting your uh, intake box back in, running your intake hose, making sure your mass airflow sensor is plugged in. Uh, there is a, a wire for that here, so just don't lose that. You can kind of tuck it back here or whatever. And then once you've got everything put back together, you should be good to just give it a start, test it, make sure you don't have any check engine lights or anything weird like that. If you do, it may be helpful to just kind of take a step back and figure out what's, you know, kind of going on with it. Uh, you know, maybe you forgot to hook something up on the on the motor side down here. Maybe a hose is loose down here. Um, and then you can you can diagnose it, you know, pretty easily. All right, and then here is that throttle body back in place. Like I said, we've got our four eight millimeter bolts that hold it in place. Run one there, one here, and two on top. There is that bracket back in place as well. That little uh, pin lines up with that hole that's cut in the bracket here. And then it's just the one ten mil. Um, and just as a side note, make sure you don't have any leftover bolts, anything weird like that. Uh, you definitely want to make sure everything is back in place and nice and solid with this. All right, guys. So there you go. That is a quick little tutorial on uh, how to put a catch can in one of these Mazdas. As you can see, I got it right tucked in down there. And I actually do have access to it uh, up under this side here. I probably will just remove the box when I have to, you know, dump it out. But um yeah so that's pretty much all there is to it it's basically just removing uh you know your intake and then the intake manifold itself making sure all the wire loom is off of it all the harness making sure these two lines are off uh, and that sensor and pull it off work on it throw it all back together so like i said it's super simple job if you put aside an hour to an hour and a half you can easily have it done and uh be back on the road again all right, so if you guys like this video, please give it a uh, thumbs up. And um, I will be putting links in the description down below um, for this catch can, as well as the lines, the hose clamps, uh, this small breather filter, and uh, I'll even put the link in there for these uh, valve stem caps. I believe they have a few different colors, so something to match the OEM color, as well as um, this blue one that I used on my Corksport aftermarket intake hose. Um, yeah, so just check down below if you're interested in buying that stuff.